Build the business you want to build. I don't want to build a one-man show doing 92% margins. Welcome back to Beyond a Million. Today, I spoke with Eric Huberman, a great friend and the owner of Hawk Media, which is an awesome media agency, and it's turned into quite an empire. In this episode, you're going to learn what it takes to build a business past a million, but probably more important for a lot of people listening, how to cross that $5 million mark, that $10 million mark, and what it takes to push past the $50 million mark. Plus, you're going to get strategies on how to launch a brand, how to compete with larger brands, and some tactical lessons to scaling, all using paid ads. Let's dive in to Beyond a Million with Eric Huberman. A business sub 1 million is different than call it 1 to 10 or 10 to 100. Yep. How does that change? How do you see the needs for the sub 1 million and then the call it 1 to 50? Yeah, sub 1 million, you're still proving traction. So you're testing a lot more. Generally, you're probably taking more risk. And not that you should be, but because you have to. You're trying to find the right places, the right messaging, the right targeting, everything for it to work. So there's a lot more risk in that sub 1 million. Maybe something's hit and you can double down on it, but generally you're still trying to figure out what's the addressable market here, what's happening. Once you're above one or two million, you got enough traction that you can double down on it. It's really easy. And then going from two to whatever really comes down to the demand and addressable market. Like from there, it's really just how big is the market of people that want this at a rate that's actually profitable. And for us, I look at marketing as like, you're really looking for the early adopters because most people buy things because their friends told them to. Still to this day, like most people are waiting to hear from a friend, like you got to check this out and that's where they mm -hmm. end up doing most of their purchasing. So you need the people that don't do that. You need the people that'll see an ad or read an article and go, this is dope, I'm getting it. There's risk to that consumer too. When they don't have validation from people they trust, they need to be willing to take that risk on buying your product or service, you look at the adoption curve, there are a lot of early adopters out there. It's I forgot the percentage, but there's a significant amount. And so when you're marketing, you want to find those people that don't need that validation to buy something in the beginning, when you're not a ubiquitous brand, that's still what you're looking for, when you're still in the customer acquisition phase of your business. And so when we're marketing, we're always trying to find who are those people. And a lot of times it's, we run into this a lot where it's a company that's like, wants to blow out XYZ for this industry. We're going to make NFTs accessible to the masses would be a good example right now. And it's like, okay, but start with the people that already buy NFTs. Start with the people that you don't have to educate on in a whole new industry and start right. with that. Get those going and then they'll go tell those all these other people like, hey, I found something that's accessible. As you said, what's the difference in that sub 1 million? You're still trying to figure out who those people are. And those post 1 million, usually you know who those people are and it's just about stepping on the gas. So from a tactical perspective, <laughs> what was popping up in my head comes back to paid. Do you see that strategy being the same if it's paid versus organic, paid versus just you know, SEO. Yeah, yeah. Plays. I think the bigger you get, the more you can be diverse in your marketing. Mm -hmm. Paid you for a decade has been a way you can scale, start a company, launch it, scale it. You, you can be iterative with paid. It's getting tighter, getting more competitive. There's less tracking because of iOS updates and all that. It's not as easy to just throw money at Facebook and launch a brand anymore. And so you're having to be diverse in what that channel is. That being said, there are going to be individual brands that do really well on Facebook or on Google. And so that's still an option. So again, back to the testing a lot, you want to try these things out and come up with thesis to test against that it's like this could work because of xyz and you want to be scientific about it you want to actually have a reason why you're going to be able to compete on these channels and it can't just be because i have a cool product or service like everyone's got a cool product or service it's like why you specifically are going to stand out on this channel and figure that out because if not you're just competing with everyone else. And it's a very democratized like level playing field now. How it works is a bidding system. So the person willing to spend the most gets the share of ads, so to speak, and they have their full funnels built. Actually, the people they're spending the most are the ones that have ubiquitous distribution. PNG, Unilever, like their stuff is anywhere. So they advertise to you knowing that the next time you're in the supermarket, you're going to buy their mm. toilet paper. That's how they think, which will beat any type of customer acquisition focused campaign all day because they have such a wider net. Then you get into the bigger customer acquisition companies. They've got amazing funnels on email and SMS and content and a great merchandising strategy to bring their people back in. So they're betting on lifetime value and how long over the course of three years, how much that person's going to spend or right. five years, whatever their number is. And then you've got this new startup that needs that money to come in next month. And so when that's the field of competition, you've got to have something really fucking compelling to compete with that kind of number on a few month turnaround, which you need to when you're a startup. You can't afford to wait years for your return. So when it comes to advertising, I think you're dealing a lot with that. So it's really just figuring out that mix strategically that you might have an edge or do have an amazing product or service that stands out that much to your specific early adopter. What does that look like? Presumably you need that sub one, just like you need it one to 50 or one yeah, to yeah. 10, right? right? What's the difference in how you would approach that? It could be one, it could be two, it could be yeah. 4 million, right? Yeah, and it's what it is. It's Depends sub, on the industry, et cetera. Sub one, you're probably going a little, in terms of targeting and messaging, you're going wider. Mm -hmm. You're trying many different things. Once you're post one, maybe even before that, uh, high six figures, you probably have something that's working that you mm -hmm. can double down on. And then it becomes, 
becomes you're putting 80% into the shit that works and then playing with 20% on testing new stuff mm. to maybe scale off that. And then as you scale, that goes down to like 10% because so much is working. You got to keep that engine going. You're not testing with as much of your budget, so mm. to speak. A great friend of mine a long time ago told me that there is no right or wrong. There are actions and outcomes. Yep. There's no good or bad. There yep. are actions and outcomes. The action's either getting you closer or further away from the outcome that you're after. Yep. After, that's it. Yep. Relatively speaking, you could then put the labels of good or bad, right, wrong on them. And I think that the clarity of, no, 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 this is what I'm trying to build, is really valuable. And it's also very valuable uh, in the context of life, yep. when friends, family, peers, et cetera, critique. It's like, no, 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 this is the thing I'm doing. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm just doing me. Build the business you want to build. I think the most important thing is to build the business that suits you as the entrepreneur. Build it for yourself. Get the rest of Eric's strategy by watching the full episode at beyondamillion.com or on our YouTube channel. Thank you.